Hello everyone, this is Adel Ali Askeri. I'm a project management trainer and consultant, and in this video, I'm going to have a brief introduction on Primavera Risk Analysis Software. Uh, some people may know this software with its old name of Pertmaster, but anyway, we will call it as the official name of the Primavera Risk Analysis. Uh, before going to the main body, let's define the risk. My reference for this definition is the project management body of knowledge standard or the standard of the project management that issued by the U.S. Project Management Institute and is globally must recognize a standard for project management all around the globe. In this standard, define the risk as an uncertain event or condition that if occurs has an effect or uh, affection on at least one project is objective. The project objectives can be its time, its cost, its scope and quality, or its benefit. Uh, as a common understanding, we know the risk as the negative event, or in, uh, but in project management, we know the risk as the positive or negative event, and we will consider both sides of the threat and opportunity, and we are going to manage both of the threat and opportunity throughout our project life cycle. Uh, let's have a review on the process and steps of the risk management throughout project life cycle. We will start with uh, creating the risk management document. In this document, we will uh, write down the ways of risk identification or definition of the project uh, probability and impacts, and it depends on the scale of our project. And we may document the regulations and the related standards to risk identification and management in our organization. Also, we will template the report templates and we will uh, define the reporting uh, regulations in this document. By having this document in our hand, we will shift to the first process of the risk identification. The ways and the attitudes of the risk identification can be but not limited to the workshops, interviews, brainstorming, the Delphi techniques, and etc. Anyway, after the identification of risk, we have a long list of the identified risk in our hand that called as the risk register. Please don't forget that the risk identification, at least till now, is a humankind action. I mean that uh, the software and the systems cannot understand anything about our environment. They don't have any sense about the attributes about the environment, uh, about the circumstances of our project, then we have to identify our risk by our team. After having the risk register, we know that not all the risk in the risk register is in the same place of the importance. I mean, some of them are more important and some of them are less important in comparison with each other and accordingly. Then we will continue with the risk quantitative risk analysis or sift the risk Categorize the risk based on their probability and impact to the most important, medium level, and less important risk. Then, in the next step, we are going to measure or numerical assessment of the risk uh, uh, analysis. And this is the moment that the software steps into actions. Please consider and think about a real project and a big scale project. From one side, you have a long list of your activities that may include hundreds or thousands of the activities and from another side you have a long list of your identified risk that may affect more than one activities in your project and by conjunction between these two lists you will create a matrix that include hundreds or thousands uh, different scenarios and it, it is not it is a very complex situation and it cannot analyze by our mind or in a piece of paper then we have to enlist the help from the software to do the quantitative or numeric analysis on the risk scenarios and in the risk events. Uh, let's shift to the software and explain how the software and the primary risk analysis can uh, help us in this process. This is the first glance and first view on the software. I already opened one of the software is templates projects. You can see three different areas in this view. Uh, the left area, the right area, and the middle one. In the left and right area, we had the columns or fields, and in the middle area, we have the famous Gantt chart for project schedule. Generally, we sort out the uh, deterministic columns or the 
columns that is not related to this in the left side and put the uh, probabilistic columns or the columns that give us the information about the risk in the right side of the software. And below of the uh, upper area, we have some tabs to put the information and detailed information and set other uh, specifications of our activities in the software. Uh, I want to note that uh, the primavera risk analysis is a comprehensive package for project planning and controls. It means you can start from scratch by creating a WBS, adding the activities, creating the schedule, loading the resources on PRA. The PRA is the abbreviation of primavera risk analysis. Uh, you can do all things without enlist the help from the other tools and uh, you can control your project by adding and updating your project in PRA. But practically, we already created our project plan in other software such as the Primavera P6 or Microsoft Project and want to import the information and load the already defined activities and schedule with the risk and model the risk in the software. Then to import the activities and the projects from the other software, you have the options here in the file menu. You need to approach the file menu and the options for importing the Primavera project, Microsoft project, Delta, and other software is available here to get the information from those packages and doing the analysis about the risk here. Uh, generally, the software works based on the Monte Carlo simulation. What is the Monte Carlo simulation? Generally, the Monte Carlo simulation wants to simulate the treatment of the risk in the run, long run of the iteration. At first, the, the, the Monte Carlo simulation assigns a probabilistic distribution to each risk to uh, simulate its treatment. What I mean? Let me take an example for you. For example, one of the activities here that already defined is this one that takes three days. But are you sure this activity takes three days? Is there any chance to finish this activity in two days? Or maybe for the uh, wrong actions, it may take until five days. Then if you are not sure about the duration of this activity, it means a risk is imposing to this activity. In order to simulate the treatment of this activity, the Monte Carlo simulation assign a distribution to this activity and in the characteristic and in the minimum and maximum amount of this duration put the two and five. It means most likely this activity takes and finish in three days, but there is a chance to finish it in two days or maybe in the worst scenario, it may take until five days. And in the long run of the simulation and iteration in one thousandth time, the software considers the different scenario for two days, three days, four days, or five days in the simulation and will report the affection of the decrease or increase on this activity's duration on project is finished day as a report to us. Then the Monte Carlo simulation is based on and construct in the foundation of the uh, probabilistic definition, uh, sorry, probabilistic distribution. And if you don't know which probabilistic uh, distribution is matched with your uh, scenario in the reality, you can use the simple one of them. The simplest the, the, the distribution is the triangle or the normal distribution. In the normal distribution, you only need to set the standard deviation for each uh, risk element. For example, this activity takes again three days, but by the chance of one day more or one day less, the standard deviation put one here to simulate the treatment of the uh, activities. Anyway, you can model the risk on so many aspects of your project, not only for the activity duration, but also for other aspects and uh, other uh, 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 specification of your project plan, including the uh, resources, including the link between the activities, including the probabilistic branch of the activities and so on. Then by modeling all the identified risks in the activities one by one and gradually, you will have a risk loaded schedule plan. Again, 
you will have a risk loaded schedule plan and this is the time to start to simulate and repeat the scenarios for 1000th time to get the results and you have to approach the risk uh, um, menu and in the run risk analysis press the analysis and complete the iteration this is the first result that we get from the pre-memory risk analysis the results can be on project finish date, project uh, resources, project cost, or etc. But let's understand this graph at first. This is the first glance and this is the first report. Please pay attention to the deterministic finish date. The chance of the finishing, uh, the chance of the pr uh, project finish is less than one percentage. It means in the 1000th iteration, less than one percentage or less than uh, 10 times the project finish on the deterministic or the, in the days that the CPM method gave us. And this is a, a drastical hint for project planners that you cannot or you may not rely on the dates that the software gave you by the applying the risk and by the risk that you already modeled in your project. Then the other dates and the chance of finishing the project on those dates is showing in the rows for example by the chance of 50 percentage we will finish our project on 4th of august and in the worst scenario and by considering the all applied and imposed risk we will not finish the project later than 15th august uh, this is the first class of the risk imposed plan you will have the same analysis for project cost project resources and also the most important and not neglected point is that the report is available in different levels of the WBS and the projects. I already clicked on the entire plan and generally we do the analysis on the entire plan. But if you want to drill down and go to the details, the report is available for the WBS nodes and also for activities to go down. And uh, we have the same scenario for all uh, analysis and reports here. This is not the only report that you can get from the PRA. The other reports are available in the menu of the reports. Those are very interesting and decision maker reports. Uh, for example, the tornado graph, the scatter plot, and other ones is very useful and also user friendly. Let's have a look on the scatter plot as my, my personal favorite report in PRA. This Per, uh, this report is divided into four area. You can see first area, second, third, and fourth. And we have two axes in this report. One of them talk about the project is finished date, and another side is talk about the project cost. The chance of finishing the project earlier than this date and less than this budget is showing in this area by 35 percentage. It means on those repetition and simulation in 35 times, out of 1000 times the project finished earlier than 4th of august and less than 900 us dollar budget and you can drag this line to left and right to reach at the earlier and later dates and to up and down to reach at the higher and lower budget and you can do so many analysis by this, you can answer so many questions by this report. For example, the manager asks you how much is the chance of finishing the project on X date and less than the Y budget. You cannot answer this question easily by other softwares, but here uh, there is only need to set the dates in the horizontal axis and the cost in the vertical axis. And for example, this is the chance of finishing the project earlier than 7th of August and not more or not ex more expensive than 900. Let me set it as the uh, round number of 1000 US dollar. Uh, this is the chance of finishing the project less than or cheaper than 1000 and earlier than 7 August and the amount and the chance is 68 percentage. It, this is not this, this is a good chance for finishing the project on this scenario and you can have so many other scenario and you can answer so many other questions in PRA this is not the only things that the PRA can do for us 
Uh, in the next step of the risk management, we have to answer and we have to take actions for response to risk. We don't identify the risk to only know them. We want to manage them. Then in the next step of the risk uh, management, after doing the quantitative risk analysis, understand the importance of risk by the numbers, by the numbers, sorry, and by the different reports that we provided in PRA, it is time to take action to manage them. Don't forget that we have different scenarios for threat and opportunities. We have four strategies for threat and we have four strategies for opportunities. Anyway, keep it simple. This is the time to get the, to take the planned risk response and the PRA still endless, still help us to analyze the effectiveness of our solutions to manage the risk. How the PRA can help us the risk register here in the risk menu, we have the risk register. You have two different tabs. I, I don't have any information here in the risk register and it's empty now. But anyway, you can have you have two scenarios for pre-mitigation and post-mitigation. You will create the pre-mitigation and you will take the action and you will create the post-mitigation and do the analysis about them again, as I did here. And by comparison between the pre-mitigation with post-mitigation, you will forecast. Don't forget that it is, it is only a forecast. Nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. But anyway, to give the managers and the project teams a view that how will happen if we take those actions, the post-mitigation simulate the scenario for us. And by comparison between the pre- and post-mitigation, we will forecast the effectiveness of our response. Uh, we are going to finish the demo of the PRA, but this is not the only things that the PRA can do for us. For example, let me go to some other reports that is here. We can have and we can check the health of our project by the critically path report, or we can have a report about the summary risk and detailed risk by the summary risk reports. There are so many other aspects in the risk, for example, just want to note them and just want to uh, mention them in this demo that you can have the probabilistic uh, calendar in PRA. What means the probabilistic calendar? When you define a calendar in your projects and in other softwares, uh, for example, when you say that we have a calendar of the working days in uh, Thursday and uh, off day on Saturday and Sunday in all throughout and all life cycle of the project these days of the Tuesday will be a working day and the weekend is the off day but how about this scenario for example the weather forecast told us by the chance of the 30 percentage we will have a deep storm next week for three days we may have or may not have. This is a chance and this is uncertain event. You are not sure about that. But if you change those three days in the calendar as a non-working day, for sure your schedule will affect by those change and will not work on those three days because of the deep storm. But anyway, we know that maybe the storm will happen, may not happen. How we can change this calendar to the probabilistic, cal probabilistic calendar? It is available option in the uh, risk management. Also, you have so many other probabilistic about the uh, cost of your resources. For example, when you define a resource in other software and says that, for example, the cost of other is 20 US dollar per hour for all assignments and for all activities, other is cost is calculate based on the 20 US dollar per hour. But I'm not sure about that, maybe because of the inflation or anyway, the increase in Adelis salary, fortunately, uh, he may request and receive 25 US dollar per hour. Or there is a chance to talk with him to reduce the 20 US dollar to 80 US dollar per hour. This is another type of the risk that you can model in the cost of your resources and for sure, uh, for sure will affect the project is budget and you will have the same results in your project is cost result. Those are only the summary and the whole scenario in primavera risk analysis. I hope you find this video useful and if you interested in this video, I would request you to subscribe and share this video with others.
Thank you very much for your attention.